I was about 10 years old when this happened. I lived in a nicer neighborhood full of elderly people. For as long as I can remember, we've always had an alarm system. My parents almost never forget to set the alarm. I remember that it was a Sunday in the summer. Our Sunday routines consisted of going to church in the morning, finishing up chores before our week started, and resting. But this particular morning was different. I remember specifically letting my dog in from outside, and we set the alarm and then left for church. After church, we came straight home. The way we get into our house is through our garage, which can only be opened by an app on our phones. Back then, I didn't have a phone, so my mom or dad used the app. We also had a family rule, always keep the doors locked. Us kids never argued and we always obeyed, unaware of the reason. As we walked into the garage, we heard a beeping sound. As my mom walked up the steps and opened the door to our house, we heard that the alarm had been going off. We were unaware of how long it had been going off. We all had puzzled looks across our faces. My dad walked inside and looked around, but there was no sign of someone entering our house while we were away. My parents told us to wait on the stairs as they looked around. Still, nothing out of the ordinary was spotted. My parents, still confused, allowed us to come into our rooms, and the day continued as if nothing had happened. We normally went to bed around 9 or 10. We had all resided in our bedrooms, but my mom and dad were asleep. My bedroom wall shared a wall with the one outside where the front door is, and my bed is against that wall. I always had a hard time falling asleep at night, so I was laying in my bed, wide awake. Eventually, I partially fell asleep, but not quite. I vaguely remember hearing a car drive down our street, which is not a strange event. I also remember hearing the car door close. That's what caused me to sit up, wide awake, and then I heard footsteps walking up the stairs to our front door. I've always been very observant, noticing things that most other people don't. So what confused me was why I knew I heard at least two car doors close, but only one pair of footsteps walking up to the door. I remember crawling out of bed and quietly moving towards my window. I lifted up my curtain and saw a black beat up SUV outside in our driveway. I couldn't think of anyone we knew who had a black SUV like the one I saw that night. After a while, I noticed that the person standing outside the door hadn't knocked or left. I couldn't see them, but I knew for a fact that they hadn't walked down the stairs. A split second later, the doorbell rang followed by a series of knocks. My parents' room was farther down the hall, and they were not easily woken. A pang of panic hit me as the knocks continued, slowly turning into bangs. Then I heard a man's voice yelling. I had no idea what he was saying, though. Not even ten seconds later, I saw my dad. He was up and walking past my bedroom. I got up and went to him. My dad played baseball when he was younger, and he's always kept a bat in their room. He's had it for as long as I can remember. Even now, he still keeps it by his bed. He asked me what I was doing up, and I explained what I had heard. He looked puzzled as he explained to me that he heard a woman and a man's voice outside their bedroom window. My dad walked up to the front door and yelled for the guy to leave, but the man was already running down the steps. It sounded to us that it was two men and a woman. I assumed the man I heard yelling was calling to his buddies who were on the other side of the front yard near my parents' window. We never saw them. But almost immediately, they drove off, and we never encountered them again. Even now, I have no idea who they were or what they wanted. Maybe they thought the house was empty. And did the house alarm go off while we were gone have anything to do with the events that occurred that same night? I guess I'll never know the whole truth in this story. All I know is that as a 10-year-old girl, it was scary. For months after, I had nightmares. The scariest part was wondering what would have happened if they had gotten into our house. To this day, I can remember everything so vividly, and I hope nothing like that ever happens to anybody else. This is something that happened when I was a kid. I think I was probably 9 or 10 when it took place. I lived with my parents and sister in a typical house in a large neighborhood. There were lots of other houses, all with the same size yard and house. Our street was usually quiet, unless somebody that lived on it was driving down. Back then, I liked to be outside a lot and hang out with my friends. I would often play basketball in the driveway, or with any neighborhood kids that wanted to join me. There was a kid across the street and one house over named Derek, 
We were friends, and not really that great of friends, but would hang out sometimes. One day, in the late afternoon, almost nighttime, I was outside and saw Derek out as well. I remember that we started playing catch, and then moved into the street because there was more space. No cars had gone by in a while, but if they did, we would just move to the side of the road. We played catch far apart, much farther than we could get in either of our yards, and played catch for a while. Maybe ten minutes later, we saw a car start to come down the street. I knew most of the neighbor's cars, but I didn't recognize this one. Still, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was a blue sedan and started driving very slowly in our direction. When we saw this, Derek and I stopped and moved to the side of the road in front of Derek's house to let the car pass. But the car started driving slower and slower. It gave me a little bit of a bad feeling. When the car got in front of Derek, it stopped completely. I was still probably like 20 feet away from Derek and in front of the car, but I saw the window of the front passenger side of the car roll down. The driver seemed to say something to Derek, but I couldn't hear what. Derek then started walking over to the car and waved me over as well. I realized that Derek must have known the driver of the car. I walked over to him and saw that the driver was an adult male who I did not recognize. Derek told me that this guy had just gotten the car and it was brand new. The man inside asked us if we wanted to take a ride in it. Derek seemed excited about it. He said yes and then opened the back passenger side door. I wasn't really sure what to do. The man waved me in though and Derek told me to get in the car as well. I started to walk over and when I got to the door, suddenly I heard somebody shouting behind me. I looked back and it was Derek's father. He was coming out of the garage and he called for me and Derek as well. He started walking closer and told us to get out of the car. I got out and Derek followed me and I just remember that literally the instant we got out of the car, it sped away. It was so fast that I heard the tires squealing. I didn't know what was going on. Derek's father was still yelling at us and walking closer. It was then that I asked Derek if he knew the driver of the car. Derek said no. He had never seen the guy before until now. I had been sure that he somehow knew him. My parents had always told me to never get into a car with a stranger. I thought Derek would have known better. I guess he didn't though. His father made us both go inside and asked us what on earth we were thinking. I was kind of mad at Derek for being so careless and dragging me into it as well. Now we were both in trouble. At least we were safe and the guy didn't drive away with us though. Derek's father ended up walking over to my parents with me and told them about what had happened. I told my side of the story and my parents weren't mad at me or anything but gave me another lesson about what to do in those kind of situations. Looking back, we possibly came very close to getting kidnapped. I never saw that blue car or the man again after that. I was always really careful not to let myself get into any situations like that again. I live by myself in a two-story home a little bit out in the country. It's not in the middle of nowhere or anything, but the nearest city is at least 30 minutes away. I have a yard that's two acres in size and have a shed in the backyard behind my house. That's where I keep my lawnmower, golf clubs, and other sorts of items. My garage only fits one car, so there's not that much space for extra storage. Well, one day a few months ago, I realized that somebody tried to break into my shed. I was going to get my lawnmower and I saw a bunch of scuffs on the door and at the sides of it. It looked like somebody tried to pry it open with a crowbar or something. I didn't know exactly what happened, but it wasn't good. And these weren't marks that I made or that could be left by an animal. I hadn't been to the shed in a few days, so I didn't know exactly when this had happened. I looked inside and everything was still in place. I'd mowed my lawn, then locked up the shed again and went back inside afterwards. Fast forward to two nights later. It was probably around midnight. I was inside when I heard a sound coming from the back of my house and outside. I couldn't tell what it was at first, but I soon realized that somebody was trying to get in. When I went to one of the back windows, I looked out and saw what appeared to be a man in dark clothing at the back door. I turned on my light to the back and the guy took off running. He went deeper into my backyard before going out of sight. I called the police and waited, looking out the window until they arrived. When they got there, they looked around but couldn't find anyone. There were a few marks on my back door, similar to the ones on my shed. This was likely the same person. Now I was really concerned because somebody had been to my place twice in the last week. 
This time, I had actually gotten a look at them, but it didn't really do any good. Just looked to be a male, about six feet tall. Didn't see his face or anything. When the basic search around my property didn't turn up anything, the police left. I just hoped whoever had been there would not return. The next day, I had an idea to get a security camera. I went to the store and got two of them as a matter of fact. I put one near my back door and one at my shed. I hoped that I wouldn't need them, but just in case somebody tried to break in again, I could tell who they were. For a few days, everything was fine. Then, I checked the camera one day to see that it had picked something up. The first couple of days, it did pick up some things like squirrels and even a deer. But this time, the person came back. The video had been recorded at 2 in the morning the previous night. I watched the video and saw a man wearing a sweatshirt with the hood up enter my backyard. He was looking down as he walked and then appeared to look up at the camera for just a second. When he did, I was sure that it was my neighbor from across the street. I couldn't believe it. He then walked past the camera and was seen walking back just seconds later. When I saw this, I was very surprised. I really didn't know my neighbor from across the street very well at all, but why on earth would he try to break into my shed or house? I watched the video several times and was about 90% sure that it was him. Because it was dark out and because the quality was not the best in the world, I wasn't 100% sure. Still, I decided to confront him. I went over to his house and knocked on the door. I knew that he was home because his car was in the driveway. After knocking, I heard footsteps approaching his door, but he didn't open it. He must have seen that it was me and decided not to. That's my best guess. I knocked again and got no response, so then I returned to my house. After that day, my camera didn't pick up any more people. I checked it many times, picked up a lot of animals, but no more people. I've also had no more attempted break-ins. I'm very sure that it was my neighbor, but I just don't know why. Why would he want to break into my shed, or my house for that matter? But since this, I've rarely seen my neighbor come out of his house. He still lives there, and this was a few months ago. It's kind of awkward when I see him, but I really don't know what to do. Hopefully, he doesn't do anything like that again.